All right, chapter three is going to start with uh, graphing and writing inequalities. So our goal after today is that you're going to be able to identify solutions of inequalities in one variable, write and graph inequalities in one variable, and solve one-step inequalities by addition or subtraction. So make sure you copy down your target for today. If you need to pause the video, go ahead. So an inequality is a statement that two quantities are not equal. They're not just equal. So they may be greater than or equal, or less than or equal, but they're not just equal to it. The quantities are compared by using one of the following signs. Keep in mind that a solution of an inequality is any value that makes the inequality true. So we should be f pretty familiar with these signs. Remember, you're always leading, reading from left to right, so less than is going to be opening towards the right. And then if there's a bar under it, that means less than or equal to. This would be not equal. And then, of course, we have greater than or greater than or equal to. So I know you've seen these before. Remember that when you're graphing, you have to determine if you're going to have an open circle or a closed circle. What does that mean on a graph? If, you're open, if you have an open circle, are you including that number? Well, if you look and compare, if it's filled in, we are including that number. So this would include whatever number you are on. This would be for either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Whereas if it's open, then you are not including. You would either be saying a number is less than or greater than, but we're not equaling to that number. So for the first one, when you graph, remember you always have to number your number line. You need a minimum of three numbers. Since I want negative one and a half, I'm going to put zero, negative one, negative two. I spaced it out that way I can have a line for the one and a half. Negative one and a half would be past the negative one, but before the negative two. I'm not including, so I leave it open. And where are, the, where are all the numbers less than that negative one? Well, all the negative numbers past negative one would be less than. So my shading would be to the left. For B, you need to simplify this first. So if I have four squared plus two is greater than or equal to W, Eva simplify what you have first. 4 squared would be 16. And 16 plus 2 would be 18. Remember, you're reading this left to right, so you're saying 18 is greater than or equal to W, but sometimes it's helpful to turn that around and write the variable first. If I want to start with W, I then need to write this backwards. W is less than or equal to 18. Notice I didn't really flip the sign. Here it is open towards the 18, and here it is open towards the 18. To graph, you need three numbers, so 17, 18, 19. We're filling it in this time because we are including 18, and I want all the numbers less than, so I'm going to the left. If you have questions on graphing, try to practice a few more problems. I think we should all feel pretty comfortable with this. If you are given a graph then and you need to write an inequality, always look at the number that you're on. The circle here is on 50, so 50 is going to be part of my inequality. You can use whatever variable you want. Typically, we are all pretty used to x. And I'm going to say that x is what compared to 50? Well, notice where all your shading is. All your shading is over here on this side. So I'm looking at 30, 40, and 50. I'm looking at all the numbers that are less than 50. I'm not including 50 because the circle is open. Try the second one. If you want to pause the tape, you can pause it. To graph the second one then, you're going to use x and negative 2. 
Notice I'm going towards the positive number, so I'm saying x is greater than or equal to negative 2 because it's filled in. We can apply this then to word problems. The members of a lightweight crew team can weigh no more than 65, 165 pounds each. To find a variable and write an inequality for the acceptable weights of the team members and graph the solutions. So when we define our variable, I'm going to use W and I'm going to label that acceptable weight. You need to tell me what, you're, what it's standing for. They must weigh no more than. No more than tells you that it must be less than. Can it include 165? Well, it is 165 no more than 165? Yes, so we can include 165. So I'm going to say that the weight has to be less than or equal to 165. We need to graph this, so we're going to have a number line. You only have to have three numbers. I am including 165, so I'm going to put a filled in circle on there. And I want all the numbers less than that, so I'm going to the left. This is all the book is looking for right now in this first section because we're not at compound inequalities yet. But if you were thinking ahead and you said, well, wait a second, I can't go to negatives, that's great too. So we would draw our number line, maybe show 0, show 165, and then maybe I'll double it and show 330. So I would want the numbers less than 165, including that, up to 0 pounds. And then it would be debatable whether you would include that or not. Can you really weigh 0 pounds? I would say no. So you could have a compound inequality. Right now for the book, this is all we're looking for, guys. Compound inequalities are later. But if you thought ahead, that's awesome to see. The last example then, if you're going to describe the solutions of this inequality, you need to first solve it. It's just like an equation, so I want to isolate the variable. To isolate my p, I need to divide both sides by 2, so I say p is greater than 4. Your solutions then is p is any number greater than 4. Tomorrow in class, at the beginning, we will talk about set notation and interval notation and determine the two.